Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Finance and GI, a show where we try to answer the most frequently asked questions about GI disorders in just under five minutes. I'm your host, Alyssa Sutton, and I'm the program coordinator for IFFGD. Today, I am so happy to introduce Dr. Joy Liu. Dr. Liu is a GI physician at Northwestern University in Chicago and is also one of IFFGD's junior academicians. Dr. Liu specializes in functional GI disorders such as IBS, motility disorders such as gastroparesis, and also pelvic floor disorders. Dr. Liu, thank you so much for joining us here today. Today's question that we're going to answer, and this is actually one of IFFGD's most frequently asked questions. This is something that patients reach out to us about all the time, but it is what should patients avoid eating if they have diverticulitis? So right after a bout of diverticulitis, your provider may recommend a liquid or bland diet that's low in fiber for a short period of time to help with the healing process. One of these is uh, the BRAT diet. Um, It's a good example of a bland diet. And that stands for banana, rice, applesauce, and toast. Often, you can advance your diet based on how you're feeling, which you may be able to do pretty quickly in one to three days back to a regular diet. You should not restrict your diet on your own for more than a week. And you should reach out to your treating provider if you have questions about how quickly to advance. So that's the short term. And what about after the diverticulitis has passed? Do you need to be on a special diet for the rest of your life? You may mention that they avoid eating seeds and nuts because they have diverticulosis. However, you do not actually need to avoid these foods unless they already make you uncomfortable. A rigorous study has showed that people with diverticulosis who avoided nuts and popcorn actually had more episodes of diverticulitis than people who had an unrestricted diet. On the other hand, high consumption of foods like red meat, fat, and refined grains, as well as cigarette smoking or tobacco use, have been shown to increase the risk of diverticulitis. Changes in the gut microbiome may affect your risk of diverticulitis, but we do not know enough about this relationship to make recommendations on whether taking probiotics and which ones would help. It's helpful to think not just about what you should avoid, but what you can include in your diet to be healthier. And for diverticulosis, we recommend a diet that is high in fiber. It's been shown that a low risk lifestyle with modest consumption of red meat at least 23 grams of fiber daily, two hours of exercise per week, and maintaining a normal body mass index was estimated to prevent about 50% of diverticulitis cases. All adults are advised to get around 25 grams of fiber daily for women or 38 grams of fiber daily for men. Fiber is found naturally in foods that contain whole wheat, oat bran, and beans, vegetables like lettuce, carrots, and broccoli, and fruits like apples, berries, and citrus. Please go to the IFFGD's website on dietary fiber for more information. Thank you so much, Dr. Liu, for that explanation. That was very informative, and I know that a lot of patients are going to benefit from that explanation, especially about the nuts and seeds part, because I know that that's a big misconception for a lot of patients. It is so important to discuss any dietary modifications with the healthcare provider, such as a registered GI dietitian. They can help assess your individual circumstances while also helping ensure that your nutritional needs are being met through a well-balanced diet and healthy eating habits. You can check out IFFGD's complimentary dietitian listing, which is comprised of over 150 dietitians that specialize in GI disorders by using the QR code below. That is all the time that we have for today. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And as always, if you have a question after watching this video, please feel free to leave a comment below or email us directly at IFFGD at IFFGD.org. And we'll do our best to answer your question in another episode of 5 Minutes in GI.